The jury's pressing and seated. You may be seated. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Uh, just a question for all of you. Has anybody here become exposed to any information, uh, any information regarding this case, uh, independent of what's been going on in the courtroom? All right, thank you very much. Um, before we begin, I want to just say something. Uh, this time of year, uh, two things happen in Daytona Beach. One of them is that a bike week is about to start, and the other one is a pollen that is incredibly terrible. And I suffer bad from allergies, so I'm hoping I won't break out into an allergy attack while the proceedings are ongoing. But I just want to let you know that I suffer badly from allergies, and I may, may wear the mask sometime during the proceedings. All right, members of the jury, you have found the defendant guilty of three counts of murder in the first degree. The punishment for this crime is either life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. Now, the attorneys will now have an opportunity, if they wish, to make an opening statement. The opening statement gives the lawyers a chance to tell you what evidence they believe will be presented during the penalty phase of this trial. Now, what the lawyers say during opening statements is not evidence and you are not to consider, consider it as such. After the attorneys have had the opportunity to present their opening statements, the state and the defendant may present evidence relative to the nature of the crime and the defendant's character, background, or life. You are instructed that this evidence, along with the evidence that you have heard during the guilt phase of this trial, uh, is presented in order for you to determine, as you will be instructed, one, whether each aggravating factor is proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Two, whether the aggravating factors found to exist beyond a reasonable doubt are sufficient to justify the imposition of the death penalty. Three, whether mitigating circumstances are proven by the greater weight of the evidence. Four, whether the aggravating factors outweigh the mitigating circumstances. And five, whether the defendant should be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. At the conclusion of the evidence and after the argument of counsel, you will be instructed on the law that will guide your deliberations. Now, an aggravating factor is a standard to guide the jury in making the choice between the verdict of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. It is a statutorily enumerated circumstance that increases the gravity of a crime or the harm to a victim. You must unanimously agree that each aggravating factor was proven beyond a reasonable doubt before it may be considered by you in arriving at your final verdict. In order to consider the death penalty as a possible penalty, you must unanimously determine that at least one aggravating factor has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, the state has the burden to prove each aggravating factor beyond a reasonable doubt. A reasonable doubt is not mere a possible doubt, a speculative, imaginary, or a forced doubt. Such a doubt must not influence you to disregard an aggravating factor if you have an abiding conviction that it exists. On the other hand, if after carefully considering, comparing, and weighing all the evidence, you do not have an abiding conviction that the aggravating factor exists, or if having a conviction it is one which is not stable, but one which wavers and vacillates, then the aggravating factor has not been proved beyond a reasonable doubt, and you must not consider it in uh, providing your verdict on the appropriate sentence to the court. A reasonable doubt as to the existence of an aggravating factor may arise from the evidence, a conflict in the evidence, or the lack of evidence. If you have a reasonable doubt as to the existence of an aggravating factor, you must find that it does not exist. However, if you have no reasonable doubt, you should find that the aggravating factor does exist. Before moving on to mitigating circumstances, you must determine that the aggravating factors are sufficient to impose a sentence of death. If you do not unanim unanimously agree that the aggravating factors are sufficient to impose death, do not move on to consider the mitigating circumstances. Now, you will hear evidence about the impact of this murder upon the family and friends and the community of the decedents. This evidence is presented to show the victim's uniqueness as an individual and the resultant loss of the decedent's death. However, you may not consider this evidence as an aggravating factor. Now let me talk to you about what mitigating circumstances. 
Should you find sufficient aggravating factors do exist to justify the imposition of the death penalty, it will then be your duty to determine whether the aggravating factors that you unanimously find to have been proven beyond a reasonable doubt outweigh the mitigating circumstances that you find to have been established. Unlike aggravating factors, you do not need to unanimously agree that a mitigating circumstance has been established. Rather, whether a mitigating circumstance has been established is an individual judgment by each juror. A mitigating circumstance is not limited to the facts surrounding the crime. It can be anything which might indicate that the death penalty is not appropriate for the defendant. In other words, a mitigating circumstance may include any aspect of the defendant's character, background, or life, or any circumstance of the offense that reasonably may indicate that the death penalty is not an appropriate sentence in this case. A mitigating circumstance need not be proven beyond a reasonable doubt by the defendant. A mitigating circumstance needs only be proven by what is called the greater weight of the evidence which means evidence that more likely than not tends to prove the existence of the mitigating circumstance. If you determine, determine by the greater weight of the evidence that a mitigating circumstance exists, you may consider it established and give that evidence such weight as you determine it should receive in reaching your conclusion as to the sentence to be imposed. State, you may give your opening statement. Mm -hmm. 